First of all, you don't know me. <laughs> We're all about that high school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queens, drama queens, smart girl, rough girl, fashion but you're tough girl, you could sit with us girl. Drama queens, drama queens, drama queens, drama, drama queens, drama queens. Oof, bring us in, Sophia. Oof. Oof. <laughs> 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 Oh, sweet, sweet baby Jesus. This was oh. a tough watch. This, he, what? I, I almost feel like it's a pattern that we get such a great episode and then <gasps> we go, oh, there it is. And then we lose That's it and then show. we get it. I, it's it's like toxic love. I don't know what it is. Maybe that goes too far. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back, everyone. <laughs> We're, uh, yeah. We've just watched season two, episode three, Near Wild Heaven. Mm. Harry and I feel like we might have been in hell. <laughs> yeah, purgatory, at least. <laughs> this is brutal. That's, that's actually exactly perfect. Purgatory, yeah. indeed. This show first aired October 5th, 2004. And the synopsis is... Although Nathan and Haley are already married, Tim insists on throwing Nathan a post-wedding bachelor party while Brooke throws Haley a bachelorette. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. Lucas tries to decide whether he should visit Dan in the hospital. Okay, but here's what the real episode is about. <laughs> strippers. Just strippers. Like, the Oof. whole thing is just a... It's a fantasy of what teenagers are into. Um, I don't know any... 16 year olds ever mm -hmm. who had the courage capability financial liquidity or frankly like even the thought to try to hire a stripper strippers are okay. grown-ups well yeah that's a like is it a felony to hire one if you're underage like is I don't, it a felony I didn't know what the for them were. to perform for so yes children so so the answer is yes because Sophia <laughs> this happened to me, the day what? I graduated high school. So, so, so <laughs> my girlfriends at home who are listening to this are going to be like, oh no, she's throwing us under the bus. What happened? We graduated and there was like a pool party the last day of senior year of high school. And so we like yeah. all went to the community pool. It was sponsored by the school. And one of our classmates who was like super cool was 18. And she's like, I'm going to get us a hotel room tonight so we can have a slumber party. And we're thinking like, oh, my God, that's crazy. Like, we're going to have a hotel room slumber party. That's insane. We get to the hotel and then she springs it on us. She's like, and, and yes, and I've also hired a stripper. And I'm like, whoa, I'm queen virgin, man. I'm like, no way. Not happening. So this dude shows up dressed as a bad cowboy. And oh, no. there's like everyone there is under 18 except our friend who hired him. And I'm just like, we look like babies. We look like babies on this show when we were 22. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Back when we were really babies, we're definitely babies. And he proceeds to like put pudding on my friend and mm. lick it off. Of my no. It was the wrong <laughs> moment to take a sip of, of my smoothie <laughs> just then. Oh, my God. He brought a duffel bag full of, like, jello pudding, you know? It was oh, no. incredibly inappropriate. And so he, like, went to every girl, and I had seated myself, you know, like in hotel rooms, how they have the side table with the lamp? I was, like, in a back corner with a lamp. And as he started to walk towards me, I was like, nope, done, calling the cops, done, done. And that dude got dressed so fast. Um, yeah, he jokingly was like, you guys are 18, right? And everyone just kind of looked around. It's a, so it wasn't like all fun and games, <laughs> like this episode. I'm like, no guys, the reality is that it's like mortifying and, and mm -hmm. can be funny, but only, only when the adults in the room are the ones that are embarrassed because they should be. Um, you're supposed to card, card. It's a really simple process. Yeah, I just, it weirds me out the the number of times that things were written for us to portray that border into not only things that are just straight up illegal, but like, why did the grownups we worked for think it was okay, whether it was Nikki saying to Jake how she likes him young, or these this woman, this adult woman 
stripper that Tim's brother hired telling Nathan, you're young, you're funny. Like this, this guy stripping for all these girls, like, oh man, I just remember how uncomfortable it was. And I'm like, who are these people we worked for who thought this was acceptable? By the way, we know who they were, and I promise you, no one wanted to have sex with them when they were teenagers. That's just yeah. the deal. Oh, well, they used to yell at us about that. So remember remember coming up in season three when I went to do that movie on hiatus and I cut my bangs? And he uh-huh. who shall not be named screamed at me the first day we were at work and was like, all the cheerleaders in, at school, they all had bangs. None of them ever wanted to f*** me, and I hate women with bangs. And I was like, I think... What you're saying to me is so far past the line <laughs> that um I don't know how to respond to you. Usik ew. Usik ew. Ew. Is that the name of this episode? <laughs> <laughs> there's so much uh yeah, there's if there's ever an episode where people are like, oh, we can see what's going on behind the curtain on yeah. One Tree Hill, this is one of those episodes. So let's start. What happened at the beginning of this? Because Okay. The, the beginning actually back. opened in the sweetest way on us hanging that beautiful um, board oh, of Polaroids. Yeah. Those yeah. Polaroids are so iconic. We were like, oh, man, this is so sweet. We love this. And then... Poor Brett Claywell. I mean, what a <laughs> sweet man. What a sweet actor. Yeah. This is when they really started to pick on Brett in the writer's room and make him do very inappropriate things. You know, this is when they had characters start calling him dim. Yeah. Um, and and they they had him, quote, ordering strippers on the phone as though he were ordering takeout. Right. It was a very racist little it rant. Va- it was very <laughs> racist and inappropriate. And I just really feel for him. You know, when well, you're because afraid. Because a good actor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he, he committed is. because that's his job. Well, And yes. they always lorded his job over him. So he's like, if I don't show up and do this 110%, All they the just fire. won't bring me back. Yeah. 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 And I think that that's such an immense amount of pressure to put on a young person Oh, man. Um, But he sells it and he makes Tim a lovable character because he mm -hmm. is so messy. Um, They could have they could have given him a layer of humanity. (laughs) Poor, (laughs) poor, poor, sweet Tim. And you know what else they did in that opening scene that we didn't like? They made fun of Joy's satin bra, which we love so much. Okay, so just so you guys know, that was a calculated move because you've seen or you've heard uh, in the episode where. Haley and Nathan finally get together, like Joy put a lot of thought into what she was going to wear in that scene. She didn't Mm -hmm. want it to be like a wonder bra, you know, like there was a lot of thought and we loved it, you know, it made her look vulnerable and young and, you know, kind of bohemian and cool. Mm -hmm. And so by scripting it in to -hmm. this episode, that was a way to make fun of her and her choices. But like, no, it's not us. It's the storyline. And so Mm -hmm. Sophia and I both like cringed when we saw that because we, you know, we knew what was going on behind the curtain. Um, Mm -hmm. And I like that bra. I stand by it. I stand by it too. And, and it was difficult for all of us. It was difficult for Tim to have to say things he didn't agree with. It was difficult Mm -hmm. for us as women to go, oh, so you guys in the writer's room want to make fun of joy and you're going to make Hillary and Sophia do it as Brooke mm-hmm. and Peyton and yeah. be like, ew, we need to upgrade you. Upgrade you to what? Like some male stand up pin up fantasy, which is what this well, entire episode is. Oy vey. Girl, I just love that we kept our boot cut jeans on for this whole episode. <laughs> I also love that we huddled in the back of that party bus when the boy stripper came because we were all so genuinely terrified. Can we tell the story? Is it bad? Sophia, I don't think it is. It's, I, I mean, don't it's think a it's true bad story. At all. Okay. This is one of the iconic stories of our little trio <laughs> um, and a really like bonding moment for the three of us because we were yeah. all equally scandalized. So give it to them. Give it to oh, them. Oh, man. Okay. So this gentleman. Pro. Uh, a pro. A, a real pro shows up, you know, the the gag we play, which I actually really appreciated this, like, you know, Brooke and Peyton have orchestrated this whole thing. Yeah. And we call this each other. Funny. Yeah, we call each other Cameron and Gwyneth. I was like, this is very cute. I like this. And, you know, we pretend that the that the party bus is broken down and 
And get the driver to pretend too. <laughs> yeah. And the driver, we were like, stellar acting, sir. Um, so this mechanic shows up. We're like, we can't call Lucas. So some other tow truck comes and the mechanic is a stripper. Now, we don't know anything. We don't know who he is or what his <laughs> credentials are. And he's like, oh, no, yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a real stripper. This is my thing. Starts telling us about where he dances. And like, I, and I vaguely- remember us being like genuinely like, like interested, like, tell us everything. Like, yeah, what is that like for you? Yeah. And also, like, did you play sports in high school? And like, who taught you, like, who, who got you into the game? You know, like, mm-hmm. he was an interesting dude to talk to and was actually very respectful of us because I he think was. he could tell that we weren't like, I think he's probably used to women ogling him and like wanting mm-hmm. to touch him and stuff. And we definitely didn't want to touch him. Like, we, no. we were like, We're professional. We're very nervous. What I do remember is that the story we're about to tell was the turning point. Like he came in all with all his swagger, expecting to be hit on because he's a performer. And like you said, he's very used to being ogled and objectified and whatever. And he he did his bit for us. And Mm -hmm. we were all so taken aback. (laughs) We didn't respond. (laughs) We just smiled politely. And perhaps we're projecting, but very quickly he was like, oh dear, this is not okay. <laughs> and then he got really chill with us and like just told us his story. But yeah. his his gag was, you know, he had his rip away track pants on and he came on the party bus after we did the initial scene and he goes, I can't even say it. I still so makes we, me... did we notice it at first? Because that's no. was like because we were, I don't know how it came up. I vaguely remember a story about like body hair removal or something like yes. requirements shaving, of the shaving job. Butts. Shaving butts. He was telling us that all the male strippers shave their butts. That's what it is. And we were like, <laughs> wow, your job is crazy. And he goes, yeah, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, oh. something about like how you make yourself, I don't know, look valuable. You guys, I'm sweating on the inside of my I know, body right we're now. both so sweaty. I had a robe on while we were watching the episode <laughs> and I had to take it off because we've all, it's like we're premenopausal at this oh point. We're just God. like, oh my God, it's so hot in here. We're like, I'm it's so anxious. I'm having a hot flash. Um, so he says, essentially, he's, he's giving us the cute lines about how you get ready for being this hot guy. And he, I'll never forget it. He's got his track pants on and no shirt. And he leans in and he says, and you know, the most valuable part, the most valuable thing I have for my job, I have a cock hung below the knee with your name on it. (laughs) (laughs) And we froze. We just shut down entirely. I still, I've got goosebumps all over my arm. So, because it's mortifying. My My whole body feels, my chest is so tight. I remember like in my head, I know that we were with our whole crew. Yeah. I know there were lots of people around, but mm-hmm. when that happened, there was just a group of girls in lingerie tops on a bus with a man who was older than us. And I genuinely, I felt threatened and, and I know that wasn't his intention. And as he says it to us and we all look around frozen, he's not paying attention because he's rolling up his left <laughs> pant leg <laughs> And, oh he, and, and he rolls his pant leg up to his knee and then he puts his heel on like the on bar the, the top. Seat. Yeah. <laughs> and there is a tattoo, you guys, of a rooster <laughs> hung by its feet, hanging upside down, and it has a banner across it. Like one of those <laughs> banners people get across hearts that say mom. Yeah, but in, yeah. in the banner, it says the words, your name on it. It's below his knee, friends. A rooster hung by the feet from the side of this man's kneecap Mm -hmm. with a banner. So a quote cock with your name on it. And we all were like, we were so relieved. I was so (laughs) relieved because I had no idea what he was doing with his pants when he went to show this to us. And I'm like, this is going to go so bad. This is going to go so bad. And you know that the nervous energy of just like, oh, oh, this is like a very like It's very much a joke, but that he has on his body permanently. Forever. forever. And then when he looked up, like, huzzah, here's my joke. I think he, I really believe that he saw the shock on our faces and was like, oh no, man, these girls are babies. (laughs) And very quickly rolled the leg down and then just started to tell us all the secrets of stripping. And I I will say thank you to this actor who picked up on the vibe 
and yeah. immediately changed course and was honestly just so lovely to us. And put in such an awkward position. Exactly. Hey, dude, all the all the directors and all the DPs and everyone else will be out like in the road while you uh -huh. guys are just on the bus and just act natural, just act natural. So oh. he's doing what he knows how to do. And mm -hmm. we have also been so traumatized that we're just like, oh, I don't know what's happening. This whole episode is about yeah. nudity and weirdness. And we're like the prude girls. Of, but by the way, like had that happened today, like if we were on set today and some like dude rolled in with this story, you and I would be like salty and down with it and just oh, like a hundred percent. Tell us another one, Captain. You know, it's just. I'd be like, cat. roll it up again. I want to take a video for my Instagram yeah. story. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna post this on Instagram. Um, oh my god, that's, that's exactly what would happen. But that has been a story that we've privately enjoyed. Forever. forever listen can we find him do we know what his name is i wonder I if he's still dancing to. you know what like i bet he's a dad now that's the thing it's, it's <gasps> eric his name is up. eric okay. eric with a ch eric Ready? hey eric if you're out there hit us up on our drama queens page because you were great man yeah, you made you made what was an awkward day at work incredibly mm -hmm. memorable. Yeah, just talk about being a team player. And do you Sweet still have human. that tattoo? Yeah. And like, have you inspired other people in your industry to get that tattoo also? Or was that an industry standard? It's like, you know, when you oh. see people with the Masonic ring and you're like, oh, you're a Freemason. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, is that tattoo kind of code for when you're at the supermarket and you're like, sup, boss? I'll yeah. see you later. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Is it a I'm tattoo you're things. only allowed to get when you graduate to a certain level? Like, you well, know? And, well, was, did that joke end up being in Magic Mike? I loved Magic Mike because it too. reminded me of this dude. Yeah, Because you were like learning all the trade secrets and they were kind of demystifying. You know, there's so much talk about females who get into stripping, but not mm -hmm. a ton about boys at that point. Mm -hmm. Magic Mike was the first time anyone ever, you know, aside from those Chippendale skits on SNL, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. no one else really talked about it. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that was a weird night. We it was also weird. Eric. Yeah. Us going to the lingerie shop again. After hours. Oh, How did Brooke Davis have a key to that store? At 16? Come on. What? You know who Bevan, Bevan gave me such Deb Scott energy in this episode. It reminded me yes. of when Barbara came on during our season one rewatch and was talking about, oh no, I felt great. I wanted yeah. to jump in it. I was like, you know, put it on film forever. And, and Bevan was so like, this is hilarious. And I look awesome. And we were like, <laughs> I look awesome. good for you, dude. She inspired me to try to be more comfortable with my body. I, I love varying levels of comfort in mm -hmm. women because what I never want to do is like shame women who are like, no, my body's awesome. Look at it. Yeah. Or women who are like, don't touch me. You know, yeah. there's, everyone's got their own comfort level and it comes to you in different phases of your life. And yeah. you and I being cancer babies, you know, like being born so mm -hmm. close together and being like very guarded little princesses growing up, we were square as hell. So real square. And we ended up turning into monsters as we got older, but um, <laughs> we certainly weren't there season two. No. Definitely not. No. And, and I think that that's also really important. Everyone finds permission to be more and more of themselves, whether that's someone with very strong boundaries, someone who wants to get out there and date and experiment, someone who doesn't like whatever you feel is perfectly valid and great. And I will say one of the things that I appreciate uh, about our lives and their trajectories and, you know, the, the things that have gone well and the mistakes that we've made for me, what helped was being more of a late bloomer. Yeah. It, I've always been slower to figure out that stuff when it's, when it's for us, when it's mm -hmm. learning, when it's systems, I'm like, oh, I get it. And when it's like, how do I exist as a person in the world? <laughs> how does this work? I've always been real slow. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that's okay. You know, 
I think the stronger our boundaries are, mm. the easier it is for us to loosen up in other areas. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Because when we're, we're kids, we don't have boundaries. So all of the loosey goosey stuff felt like very scary. And mm -hmm. now I'm like, don't touch me. You can look at it, but you don't touch, don't can touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Figure out your, your fence posts, kids, yeah. and then you can feel safe in your own yard. Well, and to your point, I think the most important thing is to not use whatever your personal feelings of discomfort are on your self-discovery journey to judge other people. Yeah. Some people come into themselves real fast, more power to them. Some people take a while, more power to them. Some people try, get scared, get hurt or make a mistake and then go back in the other direction, more power to them. Let yeah. people figure themselves out and be kind. Like none of us know the, anyone else's journey in the, in the clearest terms. And so I, I really do think you're right you hit the nail on the head when you said it's important to represent people at, at varying levels. I liked that Bevan and Sarah were so comfortable in their bodies and loved being in lingerie. Oh my God, their bodies too. Good we for them. celebrated them. And yeah. also I liked that, that we got to represent girls who felt more like us, who were like, yeah. I don't, I'm not there yet. Maybe I'll learn. And, and I like that we got to do, I like that we got to run the gamut of that. Let's get there together, but let's do it like, like, like Grace and Frankie. Like we yes. should do it in our. In our oh my God, that face. is us. So if you and I are going to be 75 years old, just like who wants some of this? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got our hotness queen joining us. Um, this is a special treat for you guys. Oh, so if, do you want to bring her in? She is finally here. The icon herself, the woman who stayed on our show when we all felt like she should have been on SNL. We've got mm -hmm. Ben Prince on the podcast today, everyone. <laughs> hey! Ben! Hi! Hi! Oh my God! You. We were just giving the fans your intro. And I was like, I thought you were going to pop in. And I was like, the woman who stayed on our show when we all thought she should have been on SNL. She's yeah. here. Bevan Prince. And then we were like, oh, no. Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we said about you. Hi. Well, that's Hi. the nicest thing ever. I'm so happy to see your faces. This is so Hi. fun. Yeah. I miss you guys so much. Oh Tell me God. everything. You haven't aged, Bevan. This is some baloney, man. It's I'm Botox. Here. It is. <laughs> A ton of Botox and Girl. no filler. Okay. Is that oh, it? Wow. Yeah, that's the key. It's not farm life and just like having duck shit on you at all times? Because <laughs> that's, that's what I was trying and it's not working. <laughs> Whatever. Both of you look 12. I watched the episode last night, which in all honesty, you guys, that was the first time in like... <gasps> 20 years I've watched a full episode. Uh, and that same. was a doozy, baby. That was a doozy. I... I was traumatized. <laughs> Me too. That's oh what we've been God. talking about. I was blown away. I was like, what kind of, what kind of dirty show are we making? Dude, same. We didn't we, know. We were saying, we were like, God, last week was such a lovely episode. It was the Nathan and Haley wedding reception uh -huh. at Trick before it was Trick. We were like, God, our show is so sweet and wonderful. Look at all these emotional conversations. And then we have full blown, like, emotional whiplash this week <laughs> we're like oh okay uh yeah. maybe we this should just move on from this well so bevan you had already been living in wilmington mm -hmm. and you were kind of our tour guide to the area mm -hmm. you were our introduction to like a lot of members of our community you were like i know what bar to go to you know like <laughs> you were our ringleader and so can you tell us a little bit just like backstory wise because the trajectory of like you being a cheerleader on the show to now mm -hmm. having to strip on the show and walk around <laughs> in your underwear i need to know how your parents <laughs> like, they handled that give us your backstory so we understand where we are in <laughs> yeah. season two where i came from yeah. and um the prayers my mother has been saying for the past 20 years for my soul oh my <laughs> uh so yeah i grew up in north carolina in Cary, which is two hours west of wilmington and my first year of college i went to nc state but then uncw opened 
opened the film program. And in my mm. mind, I was like, I want to be an actor. Did I know what that meant? No. Did I do any <laughs> acting? No. But I was like, people bring you things. You get to wear pretty dresses and someone does your hair and makeup. I want to do that. Yeah, that sounds cool. So I transferred to UNCW in my sophomore year because it was the only program in the Southeast. The only film wow. program in the Southeast. Yeah. Wow. So um, I transferred to UNCW and then was interning at the casting office. And the guy sitting next to me was like, um, he was putting together a folder of all the cheerleaders. And he was like, Bevan, you were a dancer. You were a cheerleader. Do you have any interest in being a cheerleader on the show? And I was like, I've never been on set before. That would be cool. Maybe this mm. is my moment. Um, so I was like, of course. And so then I started doing that. We were making $75 a day. Mm -hmm. Shut up. For, you know, 16, 18 hour days. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, 75 bucks. It's like being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Yeah, exactly. Jesus. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, and I was still in college. I was like trying to finish my degree at the same time, which was kind of, a, was really complicated for me. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I think because we were displaced from Hollywood, I got to know you guys so well. And, you know, Soph, especially you were such a champion for me along the way with everybody. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then they started to like, let me do things. We're just going to name your character. <laughs> Kevin. Well, there it is. you know what I remember, which was so funny because, you know, all those, all those early years when we were all together, like, especially you and me and Daniela, like our, our little group that we started to get so tight inside of meant that so often when we needed something, yeah, it would be like, well, why don't we have Bevan say this? Like we, mm -hmm. Daniela should yell this, like, come mm -hmm. on. It can't just be me, Hillary and Joy who are like the ones talking while everyone else is like smiling and Standing shaking there, yeah. This is ridiculous. And and because no one knew how long the show was going to be on, where things were going to go, I think for the, you know, the script supervisor and the ADs in their head, they were like, OK, great. So they they just called you all by your names. And then <laughs> one day someone said Bevan in an episode. And then I remember like four episodes later, we were, everyone went, oh, sh we've actually named you your name. Sorry. It was <laughs> It was, was it me? It was Hillary. And it was when we did um, a fashion show. I don't know why we were doing it. I guess we were, we're doing, doing another like lingerie fashion show. Basically. Oh, man. Basically. Cool story. Wasn't it always? <laughs> yeah. Right. Because that's what teenagers do. Yeah. I like that teenagers now all wear like big hoodie sweatshirts and like the Billie Eilish big like baggy Billie pants. Eilish. Yes. God yes. bless that child. God bless her. I love, I love it. Amen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was Hillary. And so they were just like, I guess we got to keep it. Did it fuck up your life, Bevan, to like be on the street and have people be like, Bevan, <laughs> and have them confused? Is that now, after, you know, several generations have been exposed to this, in, you know, incredible show, people stop me and they're like, did you change your name to be <gasps> stop. Bevan? And I'm like, no, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm fully formed human here. No, I did not <laughs> change my name to be a CW character's name. No, but that's a good story. Like, I love that. <laughs> that's a great story. And then story. she murders the whole cast. Like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 that wait, would be wait. some serious single white female shit. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, no. Yeah. It was such a weird time, though. Like, for those of you guys at home who don't know, I mean, it's ancient, ancient history. But at the time, Brett, who plays Tim, was dating Sarah Edwards, who yeah. wears the red lingerie in this show. And so it really did feel like we were all just like a pack of kids roaming yeah. Wilmington together, yeah. like doing Halloween and going to Pravda and playing pool and like yeah. terrible, terrible things. Well, Bevan, we told the story last week about how, you know, when people go like, what was it like? And, um, and also why did your show seem so messy? We were like, y'all missed it. It was just us in yeah. a town full of college kids who were younger than us. And then retired dads and granddads playing <laughs> golf. Like yeah. we were all we had. So we actually lived a high school teen drama. <laughs> like We really did in real life. And yeah. Oh man, it was hilarious. That's and the show I want to watch. Honestly, same. <laughs> I think about it all the time. You guys, I had written a treatment in like our trailer because Sophia and I shared a trailer 
I remember writing a treatment while we were on the Screen Gems lot because, you know, we were surrounded by a huge chain link fence and there's like Mm -hmm. barbed wire atop the fence. And I remember fans lining up outside of the fence to like try and get autographs or take pictures, you know, back when we used disposable cameras instead of iPhones. And I remember it was before The Walking Dead ever aired. And I remember thinking, this is the best zombie movie ever, where like the whole world is infected except for this cast and crew of a teen drama. (laughs) And they've got, it's like, we've got the catering department. We've got like all these different people who are skilled at things. We've got grips, electrics, you know. We can build stuff. We can people who know how to survive. But like, who dies first? Like, who dies in this situation first? It's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> Not I think even a question. Trip. I think I think the Bevan of the group is the one that like makes it to the end. It's just like, I, I don't I know, agree, I can handle this. I'm just You're secretly smart, right? Yeah. yeah. The last yeah. two left standing are Bevan and Skills. <laughs> yeah. That would be my dream. Starting a new world. Well, and that was such <laughs> You're a the major... Adam and Eve. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a major, I, I feel like turning point in at least in the way that I remember it it's a bit of a blur because we did it for so long but you know skills and Bevan start dating and and I really feel like you were so cemented into the show in that storyline for you and Antoine what do you remember about that like when they brought that to you when they told you you were gonna truly become you know a part of the cast what what was that experience yeah like when did you go from making 75 to like being a cast member <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> that was a good yeah. day um yeah. no in all honesty like I remember it so clearly I remember when they came to me and they told me that Bevan and Skills were gonna have this romance it was it, it's like it's really hard to process because it kind of feels like winning the lottery, especially Mm. looking back at it and, you know, seeing how many incredible actors there are out in the world that don't even get the opportunity to walk into the room to audition for. Yeah. You're a really good actor, Bevan. Like you need to give yourself credit for that. You take what can be kind of clunky on a page and you make it fun. Yeah. Well, that's very kind. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I really do think I have a lot of skills, but I really don't think. <laughs> <all I'm ready. laughs> well, I know, but, but Bevan, we got to, I, I, I'm like, I'm going to jump on that moment for a second because look, you're right. There's so many people out there in the world who want to do this, but there were also so many people on our set who wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. There's a reason we went to bat for you and said, give this girl lines. Like, yeah. absolutely own how- You were funnier coming in- Hilarious Than the people are. from LA, you know? Yeah. Like, we were like, that's the comedy gold. Go th- go in that direction. And that was thank fun. You. When I look back at it though, I really, I really can find a lot of things that I'm incredibly proud of, right? Mm-hmm. I think one of the things that I'm super proud of is my- ability to show up and show up really hard. Like if somebody Mm -hmm. asked me to shake my pom-pom, I'm not going to shake it lightly. Like I took that (laughs) $75 a day job very seriously. Like when I was told to cross the stage, the stage, the the room, I crossed the room. Like I was like, I'm... Baby, there's a scene in the last episode at Nathan and Haley's wedding reception where you're just dancing in the background and I could not see anything else going on because I was like, that looks so fun. We just kept saying over and over again, this looks like the best party ever mm-hmm. because you're there, not even like the central character in the scene talking. You're there making it look like the oh, best fun. party ever. And yeah. that's so much harder. That's like such a harder job. I don't I don't know. It was pretty painful to watch this episode and have all like the shots of me not saying anything, but being behind you guys just like nodding and being like, <laughs> <laughs> that one, like pointing and nodding and reacting non-verbally it's like oh god no, <laughs> I, I loved it I loved it you guys were adorable well what did your parents like when they had you in underwear like right up you know in all honesty my parents are not modest at all like they oh, okay, really are like it's not worse than a swimsuit you know oh, and good we're That's beach people so yeah they, they, they don't they didn't even think about it they've never even talked about it and you know in all honesty I feel like my mom might be proud of it Okay, like, you're good girl. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's what we were saying. We're like, you know what? We're record that for all posterity. Like, yeah. Oh, this is appropriate for iHeartMedia <laughs> at all. But y'all, 
can I get those boobs back, please? <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I was talking about Joy's boobs the whole time we yeah. watched the episode because I was like, you know, they've got this stripper coming over. But meanwhile, Haley's like banging in this episode. Banging. Yeah. yeah. Banging. Who needs yeah. a stripper? It is funny to look back. We've we've been laughing so much, Bevan, on the show being like, oh, man, we were all so self-conscious and uncomfortable. And like, look at us. <laughs> Can I have that back? <laughs> oh, my God. The skin. I we was had like, no oh, idea. Man. We had no idea. But, you know. <laughs> I guess that's what they say. I was about to say the most cliche thing. Oh, f- it, I'm just going to say it. I was say about to be it. like, that's probably why they say youth is wasted on the young. And I'm like, I'm just going to go walk into traffic. Like, I got to <laughs> okay, go. Grandma. Who have I turned into? I am, yeah. I am my grandfather. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. That's <laughs> where we are now. Oh, You're going to throw it out lightly as your own. <laughs> so you... You worked on One Tree Hill, and then you worked on, like, a bunch of other stuff, too. You were doing a movie. Yeah, not great stuff. No, but you worked. Um, And then you moved here to New York, right? Yeah. Well, then after, yeah, I moved. First, I went to grad school in Savannah, Georgia at SCAD. How in the world did you finish college and grad school? Because Sophia and I dropped out. We were like, oh, (laughs) peace, guys. We're making money. So I was kind of like a, you know, I, I wasn't getting as much work as I wanted. And I was thinking that I was going to go to into the production side of things with my undergraduate degree. And I was like, maybe I would like the possibility of teaching one day. Yeah. Like I've always been interested in teaching in some capacity. So I was like, if I get my master's, I can teach anywhere. So I went and got my master's and I graduated Excelsis Laureate, which is valedictorian of all. Shut yeah. up. Yeah. It's like my yeah. proudest moment. Bevan is the one that survives the zombie apocalypse. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so I did that in Savannah, Georgia, which was amazing. It was such an interesting experience too, being 29, going mm, back to yeah. school with 20 year olds who are like, you've Ooh. already done it. What are you doing here? And yeah. I was like, I don't have a toolkit. I don't have a set of tools to self-validate. And this business is tearing me apart. Mm. It's like, brutal. I didn't know how to validate my own work. Like if, if I had gone in and auditioned and like, I could be like, okay, I, I did this, 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 and this. It's not about me. It's, you know, they can decide if I'm right for it or not, move on, mm-hmm. great job. I would think I would take it so personally. And you guys know, I was, you know, wildly insecure young kid who just was finding her footing in LA. And so it was the best decision for me to kind of pull myself away. And it was really just a shotgun course in like therapy and discovering who I am and humbleness and, mm. um, just a a really, really informative time for me. So I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. I think about that a lot. You know, Hillary, you said it, we didn't get to finish school. You know, I, I missed my senior year in college because I booked the show. I remember thinking, well, maybe I can do both for five minutes and then realizing like, oh no, I work 18 hours a day. I can't also go to class. And I don't know. I think about that still. I think about how I would love to go back and finish. I would just, I would love it. Maybe that's the next show we do, Sophia, where we go back to college together. Okay. I mean, I that's love the school. kind of reality show I want to see. Yeah, that's I the only school. version of a reality show I would want to watch. Is Amen. People getting sure. smarter. Personal yeah. growth. That feels great. I love that you did that. You feel like a, a liaison for us within the Wilmington community because you yeah. were actually in school yeah. and doing what we would be doing in a normal environment. And yeah. so you, I, don't, I was drawn to you because I wanted to be normalized in that way. I, I wanted what you had. Mm. And so then like, you know, you would talk about campus and like, you know, cheering at school and stuff like that. And I was so, it was like a moth to a flame. I'm like, tell me everything. <laughs> You're like, what's it like? But then I also remember some like very stressful cheerleading practices we all had where we were all working like 18 hours a day. You were trying to do school and also film with us for 18 hours a day. And they're like, cool, you guys have a two hour dance rehearsal tonight. And all of us just being like monsters. It was like, who was that female choreographer they brought in that just could not handle us? What was her name? I don't remember either. I I can't remember her at all. Googly eyed like. Who are these little feral animals? <laughs> and yeah, how am I supposed to teach them a dance? Yeah. I think I strategically just put myself behind you always because I was like, Bevan's going to know the moves. Yeah. I'm not gonna I, know I had to get it quick because I was like, I got to write a paper. 
<laughs> it was so John. amazing. Yeah, you. We always just tried to be close to you because I was like, if I can just, if we're in a line, but I can mm-hmm. be two steps behind her to the right, <laughs> I can just see her enough out of my periphery that I'm going to copy whatever she's doing. That's so interesting because me, like as far as acting and the world of LA and all of that, I felt that exact same sort of thing with you guys. Like I would just kind of stand a little bit behind you and watch you navigate all this. Like I had the biggest shotgun class in film and television acting by just working with you guys. You guys held my Mm. hand through everything. I was like, what is a mark? (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what to do. This director's being mean to me. What was that one director that made me cry? Oh, <gasps> you guys remember that? It, it oh, was, what episode mm-hmm. was that? Oh, God. She was so mean. It's so mean. Nobody liked her. And she made one scene. It was. Was it the mom from Growing Pains? No. She made me cry. <laughs> you do. I will find her. No, I, I know what you're thinking of. And I, I think I've like rage blocked her out of my brain. It's uh, it, was it when we did the, the the date night when I like went off with mouth? It was yeah. that girl party we had, the boy draft. The boy draft. That's what it was because there was a scene by the water mm-hmm. fountain that I sp- thought was supposed to be comedy. And she wanted it to be really actually sexy. And like, there's nothing funnier than me trying to be sexy. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We saw some sexy moves in this episode. But I, I wanted to crawl into a hole when I saw that. I was like, turn it off. I <laughs> went with my husband and he was like, that's really uncomfortable. Has he never <laughs> seen it? No, he, he like, he's British. Like, I mean, he did, his friends did like, um, watch it growing up, but he didn't. And so mm. he, he gets very uncomfortable seeing people we know on television. Like he yeah. can't, he doesn't like that. Jeffrey's yeah. never seen the show. Grant hasn't either. I cannot believe you're marrying Grant. <laughs> Wait, you guys, do you know that Tyler has merch because of Megan? Tyler Hilton has these hats <laughs> that he makes for friends that say, I've never seen One Tree Hill. And when I was catching up with them, Tyler found out Grant had never seen it and was like, oh my God. And a box yeah. of these hats showed up at our house. Oh my God. I have to get one for Jeff. Dude, <laughs> got to get all, one for Will. All of our husbands got to wear these hats. Yeah. yeah. So, it's probably why we feel safe because we're like, oh, yeah. oh, you don't know. Fantastic. Yeah. You don't care. <laughs> it's amazing though. Like, I'm, you know, I have this studio here now and I'm teaching. Yeah, so fitness. hold on, go back. But tell us how you got there. Yes. Okay. You, Bevan, you're good at everything you do. And that's, I think, why we were also drawn to you because you're just yeah. like, okay, I'm going to act now. And then I'm going to, you know, go back to college and be the best. And then yeah. I'm going to go to New York. <laughs> yeah. You literally rise to the top always. Here's the thing. Beyonce did not wake up like that. That's like my motto. Like she mm-hmm. did not okay. wake up like that. Girl started in her basement mm-hmm. and she fell on her face over and over and over again. She tried some bad moves and, you know, like worked it out. A lot of rhinestones. Like and those early days. A lot days. of rhinestones. <laughs> I still love the rhinestones. I got to be honest, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at that either. You know, I love, you know, I love a sparkly anything. I'm just like, well, <laughs> sparkly. <laughs> okay, so continue. I finished grad school and I was like, maybe I'll try um, the East Coast because I, you know, wanted to be closer to my family and that sort of thing. So I'm like, I'm going to spend one year there because all my best girlfriends at this time were in LA. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll spend one year in New York and then I'll probably go back to LA, but I'm just going to see. And um, I was working for this producer and I got really close on this like guest star role on Showtime and I was had to like sneak out of work and I had to tell him I was going to doctor's appointments and I was like what am I doing I just like I need to quit this job if I'm really going to give acting a go so I quit Mm. it and I'd never waited tables and I walked into a bar down the street from where I lived on 107th street in New York and I walked in I was like hey guys and they were like oh my god you're that girl from One Tree Hill and I was like I am can I have a job (laughs) And they were like, have you waited tables? And I was like, no. And they were like, but you're that girl from One Tree Hill. Sure, you can work here. I love it. I love it. Honestly, I love that. So I started waiting tables there. And then I moved over to ABC Cosina, which I saw Soph at once. It was so interesting. But people would come in and they'd be like, you were on a TV show. Why are you waiting tables? I was like, "Uh, money doesn't last forever, guys. And I went to grad school. And And they weren't paying us really when we were kids. You know, like they had to pay kids. Yeah, True. there there's a misnomer that everybody who ever gets a job in this industry is rich and it's like five people get rich and nobody yeah. else does. <laughs> so 
That's what it is. And moving on. <laughs> so, it was, and it was also cool because it gave me a lot of pride that I was willing to do whatever it took. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm 30, I'm waiting tables in New York City and I'm, I'm not above anything. That's grad school in and of itself, waiting yeah. tables in New York. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah. um, and then my husband walked in and Ooh. I met him and I was like, I, damn it, I was going to move back to LA and now I'm going to stay in New York. Aww. Yeah. And so um, we fell in love. We got engaged very quickly within like three months. Okay. I didn't get married for two years. And then um, I, I was feeling really stuck in the city and feeling really claustrophobic. And I know when I feel that way that I have to try something new. It doesn't matter how small it is. Like it can literally be like, you know, reading a new book. It can be anything. So um, there was a soul cycle underneath me. And so the last time I had been to a cycling class was with you in LA. Oh my God. That summer that we were like, we're going to become gym people. And I think I went like four times. (laughs) We definitely did not. You committed and you were like running all the time. And I was like, I don't run unless I'm being chased, but you look amazing. (laughs) Like maybe I should try that. And I, I just, I don't have it. You're naturally fit. Naturally. Oh, no, but you're a sweet, sweet baby angel. I I forgot about that, Bevan. Oh my God. Yeah. I so loved I like, that day. I was like, no, but I remember that class being miserable. It was so hard. And I was like, I never, ever, why would anyone go inside and ride a bike that doesn't go anywhere? That's the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I mean, it was so stupid. But I, it was right underneath where I was staying. So I was like, fine, I'm going to go. And I went in and I just fell head over heels in love. Mm. I felt a sense of freedom I hadn't felt since I was a little kid. Like, mm-hmm. inhibition, right? The lights were down. Nobody was watching me. I was mm. kind of dancing like a teenager again. I wasn't worried about anybody watching me. And I think for so many years, I had gotten so deeply concerned with outside validation and what it looks like, what I look like from the outside in. And so finding that sense of freedom again was amazing. And I was like, I want to do that. Yes. So I reached out to them and I auditioned. Yeah, you have auditions. And wow. they were like, we really like you. You're funny. You're, we like you, but um, you have no idea how to ride the bike. And I was like, give me a <laughs> chance. I will learn how to ride the bike. So they put me through this like shotgun program. And then I started teaching. And seven years later, I was training other instructors, a master instructor. And it was, oh that was my class in finding mm. my authentic voice. Yeah. Mm. Finding it and using it. And as much as that, like, I love acting. I loved acting with you guys. It was the most fun ever. I would do it again in a second. <clears throat> I don't love the business. Yeah. I don't love auditioning. I'm not one of those people that loves it. And so mm-hmm. many people do. And I love teaching. Mm-hmm. You're a natural teacher. Like, yeah. it's, it's an easy thing for you because you make whatever you're doing fun. You can see it in the show. You can see it in your real life. You're like, okay, we're going to clean the kitchen. Let's make it fun. You know? Mm -hmm. And, and that's such a valuable person to have in our lives is the person that cultivates fun. And it's always been you, Bevan. Yeah. I want that on my tombstone. Okay. (laughs) I'll start chiseling. (laughs) I cultivate fun. I want to see if anyone could make a tombstone. It's you, Hillary. (laughs) I wouldn't put that past you, even in the slightest. Like, we'll come to the farm and you'll be like, guys, look what's in the workshop. Merry Christmas. Slabs of marble. (laughs) I I love that, Bevan. I think there's something so profound in a willingness to explore and try new things. And especially when, when you talk about validation, outside validation, when the whole world has told you you've made it, when mm-hmm. everyone is saying you should be so happy and you're looking around going, but I'm not. Like, I remember the first time I heard that Maggie Rogers song, Are You Happy Now? And oh. I just started sobbing. And I was like, whoa, something is happening to me. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at that. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really interesting because people, when they think you've succeeded, don't mm-hmm. want you to change. And how dare you try to succeed at something else? Who deserves multiple avenues of success? Oh. And when you have the sort of emotional metal, the, the wherewithal to say, 
I'm going to lean into whatever makes me feel good, smart, wherever I feel like I'm expanding. You give other people in the room permission to do that as well. Yeah. And I think that it's just, it's been so fun, you know, through the ebbs and flows of all of our lives together when, when we're in contact a lot and when we're just like cheerleading each other from across the country, no matter whether it's close or far, it's, it's such a special thing that, that this little group of us gets to be each other's witnesses out in the world. Yeah. I feel really grateful for that. Me too. So grateful. Well, we've all also like rejected rejected the early kids success in a way yeah. <laughs> that I think the only really the group of us kind of understands, you know, yeah. it's like, why aren't you guys, you know, pleased with this or you should be grateful. And we're all like, uh huh. You know what yeah. we're going to do like 20 other things. And so <laughs> that's it. There's like a chip on all our shoulders that maybe doesn't make mm -hmm. sense to everybody else. But then when we all like collectively get together, like the golden girls and we're like, yeah. let's talk about that shit. You well, know? maybe after seeing this episode, the chip on our shoulder will make <laughs> sense to our fans. There it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
enjoying our time working for here. We were able to go out on the water and be in fresh air and go for bike rides and runs and, uh, you know, not be terrified and Mm -hmm. in a city. And we kind of look, I remember as there was a moment that COVID was getting, we thought it was getting better and it was going away. Mm -hmm. And I panicked. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. That sounds miserable. That sounds terrible. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And I looked at Will and I was like, I I don't, I don't know what to do. And he was like, why don't we just move here? Oh, it's such a magical place. It's magical. Right. Cause like, you know, from somebody from London, at least New York is like an easy, an easy way to, an easy, you know, place to get to. So, um, we went back and we packed up our bags and we said, we kind of told everybody we were doing it temporarily. And we kind of told ourselves emotionally we were doing it temporarily so we didn't sure. panic yeah and then we found a place and we bought a home and um I quit my job and I got a little business loan and bought 25 bikes that I could put outside oh. um so at six feet apart so that it was COVID safe and we could I could bring a little sense of community and joy during a time when there was just absolutely none Nothing. it was the perfect time for you to launch that business yeah perfect And when we talk about you being not only a teacher, but the bringer of fun, I was like, of course she named it recess. It's the best part of the day at (laughs) school. Genius. Best part of the day. You're perfect. I love it so much. Guys, anybody who is in Wilmington, if you haven't been, what are you doing? And to our fans who still make, you know, the pilgrimage to all the OTH sites, go take a class. Can fans come and take your class as part they of their like, Wilmington trip? Up. They have been showing up and it's amazing. Yes. That's so cool. I would be frustrated if people came and like didn't like, you know, really contribute to the community because it's not about me so much as it is like our our experience together. Yeah. And they come in and they show up so hard and give it all they have. And it's like, It's the best. We Okay, so I've never done a cycling class because I'm a very awkward woman. Um, I remember Danielle (laughs) came... Listen, Danielle came to see me at the farm and I was like, you've had three kids. Why do your thighs look like that? That's like insane. And she's like, oh, Bevan got me doing bikey things, you know? So I feel like the next time we come to town for a convention, rather than me have to do another painting class, like we'll just come do a recess class with some fans. That would be so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Um, but will you also come back on the show when the Bevan skills romance flourishes? I would love nothing more. Yes. Oh, Bevan, I miss you. I miss you guys so I much. I miss you. I'm in the city right now. I'm like looking out the window and I'm just like, I wish you were here. I know. I do miss it. I do miss it. You know, Will goes back every couple weeks and um, I'll probably start traveling a little bit more, you know, when things okay. kind of settle down. Girl, next time you're up here, let me. No, we'll I will. Come down from girl. Toronto. I'll come. It's a four. It's like a fifty-minute flight from Toronto, guys. I'm coming. Let's get. Hey, let's get into some trouble. Yeah. You're in Toronto, Soph. Yeah. Wait. Let's get into some trouble. Let's get into some trouble, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Hold on. I just heard that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just saw spikes of our twenty-four-year-old selves yeah. shoot yeah. through our eyeballs, and I'm into yeah, yeah. it. Every time Danielle and I get together, it's like we're we're literally. 20 again and it's yeah. a disaster <laughs> i like that <laughs> that's my favorite um all right well, we love you so much babe love you guys um, thank you so much i'm so proud of you guys i didn't even i feel like I'm we just talked about you. me that's all we oh. want to do though i know but yeah. i want to talk okay we talk about ourselves all the time don't worry <laughs> the egos are intact <laughs> I'm so happy i'm so happy for yourself i haven't had a chance to tell you i'm so you. over the moon ecstatic for you and grant like i can't thank you even handle it it's so fun. Please tell him I said hi. I will. I love yeah. you guys. We love, love you so much. Have a great rest of the day at recess. All right. I can't wait to get fit. Go kick I some ass. <laughs> I can't wait to ever like not feel winded when I walk up the stairs. Maybe Bevan can well, teach me. I, I'm, I don't do I don't do anything exercisey like ever. But if someone was going to get me to, it's her. Like, yeah. Because she would that make it right. not miserable i think what it is is i had a boyfriend when i was a teenager give me a uh like a christmas gift like a membership to lucille roberts which is a ladies only gym here in new york city <laughs> i don't think they exist anymore oh but my god like, hey you'd be a 10 if you got in shape and oh. i have just revolted against it ever since um yeah. 
But a Bevan situation would be fun. I'm and that's the it. difference. It's like in this episode, the whole stripping thing is talked about so gross. We use the word slutty multiple times in like Ugh. five minutes. I know. But I then hate if that. you look at it from a female perspective, we can look at it and be like, oh, there are parts of this that are fun when it's not gazed through the lens of like yeah. dudeness. We got just a hint of that with the instructor. Um, yes. Sylvia Jeffries was the instructor of the ladies pole dancing class. And I know so many women, especially women who've been through trauma, who have gotten back into relationship with their bodies by mm -hmm. being in groups of women and taking classes like that. They have literally yeah. like gotten physically back into their own beings. And I would love to see more of our ability to move, whether it's through dance or spin or whatever. I, I would love to see that be culturally presented to us as strengthening and empowering and like goddess sh rather yeah. than like you look hot when you do this ladies what i don't like that Ugh. <laughs> this is a goddess body <laughs> this is a goddess body damn it damn it damn it maybe that's what we call this episode no I'm yeah kidding. goddess body <laughs> we're just gonna take it back Okay, so should we answer fan questions? Are I there think fan we questions should. for this episode? Yeah, we have some good ones. Um, this is actually lovely. Tobra asks, if you could go back and tell your 22-year-old self one thing about how to deal with what life throws at you, what would it be? 22? Hold on, I'm trying to like differentiate 22 from 25. They're all messy. We were 22 in this year. Season two, we were 22. Okay, so um, I would tell 22-year-old me, don't let them bleach your hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so listen, the bleaching of the hair was at a very fancy salon and our oh, yeah. hairdressers had to fix it. They like totally burned all my hair off at this very fa fancy salon here in the city. Um, and and what is giving me private relief because this, episode, this season is so painful to watch aesthetically mm -hmm. is that sweet Billie Eilish, who I just think the world of is yes. also dealing with the blonde burn mullet. It's the burn mullet. Yep. I feel like Miley's gone through a burn mullet phase. Everybody who bleaches their hair out seems to. Yeah, burn mullet is just a rite of passage. <laughs> okay, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter literally just bought, brought me this business card. I gave Jeff these business cards to hand out at our wedding because he's uncomfortable in crowds. They say, uh, stop, stop talking. talking. I have those! <laughs> Hillary, I have those. <laughs> George just brought me one. He's like, Mom, enough. What advice do you give 22-year-old you? Oh, man. Um, I, I would tell 22-year-old me to trust my gut. I didn't have experience with people who lied. Yeah. Like, in my young adulthood. Yeah. And so when something would go wrong in that early phase of, you know, being on our own for the first time, I really believed what people would say. I'd bring up a feeling or uh, something I heard or something that made me uncomfortable. And I would just take whatever the excuse was. And now I understand that for some of us, you can trust what comes out of our mouths. And for some people you can't. And when I think about how uh, that affected, you know, my, my young adulthood and, and my innocence at the time and all of us really, you know, even our friendships, when our, yeah. when the 40 and 50 year old people we worked for were pitting us against each other because they didn't want us to ask for a decent salary, we didn't know that. We no. just thought that when our bosses said, you said something about me or I said something about you or Joy said something about one of us, like, we didn't know that that wasn't true. And, yeah. and if I could go back and do anything, I would say push into the questions you have about what you're being told because you're right. You're just very used to believing the people who you think are the adults in the room. Yeah. And I would encourage young women to do that, to, to always pull things apart and make sure they know what's really going on. 
Well, because now that we're the adults, we know that adults are full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, we were mystified. We were, we like, were like, what's happening? You guys have it figured out. Yeah. <clears throat> Wrong. No, they don't. And I think it's part of the reason that we as adults and women and advocates try to be so honest with people and even doing this show and talking about what it was, you know, the joy and the not so joyful parts of it. We want to do that so that we can give other people the roadmap and like maybe they don't have to get stuck in as many ditches as we did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the triple A of, of female emotions. The triple A of the ladies. Call us anytime. <laughs> Um, we've got another question I from Malfi. Did any of you have any rituals or things you did to prepare for your day of acting? I mean, I brought that did little you? red coffee maker into the hair and makeup trailer, and that was kind of all I cared about. Same. Yeah. It's it's still the case. Yeah. I mean, look at this jar of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> jar of coffee. A jar of coffee. Uh, same. Honestly, when... When you're working hours like that and you barely get to sleep, because what people don't think about is you work all these hours. You know, we were on set 16 to 18 hours a day. Then when you go home, you have to learn the 10 pages of dialogue for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you do a lot of homework when you get home. So I just remember feeling like the, every extra second of sleep I could get, I would literally lay my clothes out on my bed next to me. So I could have the alarm go off. I'd run into the bathroom, shower and brush my teeth in the shower, run back into my room, put my clothes on and yeah. run out the door. I, I wish I was the sort of person who was like, oh, my call time's 4.30 in the morning. Well, I'll get up at 3.30 and have a tea ceremony and meditate. I would love to be that person. I'm not. I'm sloppier. You guys are waking up five minutes before. My phone's probably <laughs> blowing up because Sanderson's outside. Like, where are you? What are you doing? <laughs> get out here. That's it. That's it. Oh, um, man. Let's spin that wheel, baby. Let's do it. Since my daughter What's our most talking likely too to? much. She's so bossy. I hope that our most likely to today is just so clearly George. Let's. Ooh, most likely to <laughs> embarrass themselves on national TV. Oof. That's beautiful. How, how did we get this Vanna White? I don't know. I love this. Guys, normally our wheel spins. And then we just get the words. Now the words have come up on a on a wheel of fortune tile with Vanna White presenting them. And I love this. She's like the most famous famous resident of Myrtle Beach. She's fabulous. Anytime I like know anything about Myrtle Beach, it's that Vanna White is from there and she's their princess. I love her. Wheel uh, of Fortune was the show I watched every single night with my parents. I love really? puzzles. Oh yeah. Would you go on Wheel of Fortune and embarrass yourself? Uh, probably. But I, mean, I think the person, especially after this episode, and it wouldn't be his choice, it would be written for him, but the person who would embarrass themselves on national television would be Tim. Oh, <laughs> oh, He's such a sweet, Tim. pure baby. Honestly, the way Brett played him, he just committed so hard. Yes, I so agree. A hundred percent character is Tim. Which real life member of our family is going to embarrass himself on TV? I mean... I don't know if we should answer that. Let's not and say we did. Okay. We're going to leave it up. Hey, why don't you guys write in and tell us who maybe already has embarrassed themselves on TV? We don't know. We're not watching. Yeah. Yeah. It probably is me. I don't know. Having done live television no. for so many years at MTV, there were some real clunky days, dude. I disagree, dude. You're so good at it. Your ability to ask questions and move through stuff it like it's so natural to you i would trust you to be the the spokesperson on live tv for all of us myself certainly my most embarrassing moment on tv was uh when they brought me in to interview angelina jolie because <laughs> earlier that day she had walked off of an interview because they asked her about bisexuality and so they were like, well, we'll just have Hillary ask because she's genuinely like curious about it. And hopefully she won't walk off because it's a girl asking the question, you know, like a young girl who actually cares. And so on live TV, I'm asking her this question. And I just remember I'm being like purple, just like absolutely mortified because she was so striking and so cool. But she did not walk off that interview. Mm. God bless her. Mm. All right, folks, that's the show. That's the show, everyone. Ooh, next week we will be back with season two, episode four. You can't always get what you want. Hmm. I wonder what it's about. I don't remember. Yeah. 
Hopefully we stay dressed. That would be phenomenal. Wouldn't it though? Um, all right, you guys, this has been a fun one. I love you so much. We miss Joy very, very much. She'll be back next week. Joy, we hope you're having an amazing time at work this week. We love you. And we love you all. We'll see you soon. Fully dressed. Bye, everyone. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram at dramaqueensoth. Or email us at dramaqueens at iheartradio.com. See, see you, you next time. time. We're all High school drama girl, drama girl, all about them high school queens. We'll take you for a ride in our comic girl, drama girl, cheering for the right team. Drama queen.